Luke chapter 17. Uh, I, I just want to mind the Lord. I, I love this place, and, and uh, I'm so excited that your pastor loves you uh, enough that he wants to have a revival for his people. And uh, church family, thank you. Choir, thank you for singing. No, I tell you what, I love, love, love hearing young people sing. And is there anything greater? And uh, young people, you have no idea how much power you have. You could take over the world. People are scared to death of you, and it's awesome. I think the next youth activity, we all just get all the churches together, line up them kids, and just walk downtown with a Bible in your hand. You don't have to say a word. Just scare people to death. There's something about that book right there, man. I mean, next time, kid, just, just take them all to McDonald's. And when you go in, just hold your Bible and say, I'll take a number two. Large size with a Diet Coke and thou shalt say unto them, give me an apple pie. And let me tell you something, man. You'll have the, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. They'll give you everything free. Just go, just go, just go, 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 go. Amen. There, there's something about it, man. I love it, love it, love it. And thank God you're here. And uh, thank God there's a good preacher that was before me yesterday. And there'll be good ones coming after me. Amen. Luke chapter 17. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, don't worry about it. Here we go. Verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Yeah. He fell down on his, uh, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Our heavenly Father, I love you tonight. God, I pray that you'll bless. I pray that I would not get in the way. What a joy and what an honor it is to stand with your people. I appreciate the spirit that is here at Victory. And you told us in your word where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so, Father, I thank you for what we've already heard. I thank you for what we've already felt. Would you please help me now? I, I, I need your help. I'll fail if I try to do this on my own. Holy Ghost of God, help me and fill me. Bless Jenny and the kids and Allie, especially back at the house. Keep them safe. And uh, Lord, I do love you. And don't let Elliot come till I get home. In your precious name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. I don't know why I'm saying that. I missed his birth. Um, like when I got married, can I say this real quick? Is that okay? Okay. When, when I got married, I told my wife, I said, listen, I don't do hospitals. It's just not, there's nothing in there that says I got to go to hospital. And uh, I just, I don't do well. When I became pastor, I'm like, I don't know why y'all call me pastor, because I'm telling you, these visits are going to be quick. Like, I need drive-through visits. Like, I call, look out the window, praying for you. <laughs> I mean, it's just, y'all pray for a brother, amen. I said, you have a great mother-in-law, you have two great sister-in-laws, they're going to be with you. If, if God gives us children, it, praise the Lord, they're going to be right there with you, girl. So when it was time for her to have Scotty, and I called everybody and dropped her off, and they took her up there, and I said, I'll be down here. And then when we was time to have Philip, I tried to go in, and I made it to the room, and they put me in a corner, <laughs> facing the other corner all by myself. And then they had a nurse with me. His co How's his color look? It looks okay, okay. And I lasted two minutes. Out, out I went. I, I literally, well, I passed out, and then I woke up outside the hospital. I just can't handle it. You don't need to go in there. And... Um, and then, I'm, I'm sorry, and I owe him. That's why I brought him to the meeting this week, and I'm paying him back. But, uh, yeah, I was at a ball game, And um, so I really missed that one. Amen. And I get a call. Are you Scott Gray? I'm driving a bus, okay, with a ball team. 
We're on our way back. We won the game. And I'm driving on the road. It's a state trooper. He said, is this Scott Gray? And I was, he goes, this is state trooper so-and-so. And I looked in the mirror. I said, are you following me? And uh, how fast can a church bus go, you know? And he's like, uh, no, I'm just trying to get in contact with you. Your wife just had a baby. I said, oh, praise the Lord. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, you talk about mean looks when you walk into a hospital, all the nurses, mm-mm, you know, I was like, <laughs> excuse a brother. Here we go, amen. <laughs> Luke is the only gospel where we find this story of the cleansing. One of the many lessons that we see in this story, and I love this story, is the power of Christ to heal. We learn in Luke's gospel to have a spirit of gratitude. There are many stories that you'll find. There are so many things, and we heard it in song, and as you know, you can't spend long reading the Word of God without just stopping and saying, thank you. What would a person give for a good night's rest? How much would you pay to just have peace of mind? What value can you put on good health? What value can you put on just, I had a good day? Here's a story of some men that were struggling. And not only were they just struggling, they have a sentence of death placed upon them. As we look at this thankfulness, if you will, and Lord, I'm thankful. I love many lines in that last song that they just sung, but... I just wanted forgiveness. I remember as a 10-year-old boy realizing I was on my way to a devil's hell and I was a pastor's son, but preacher's kids die and go to hell just like non-preacher's kids. I was raised in church, man. My mama, uh, she made sure you were there and I I thank God for it. I mean, I've grown up in church. This is all, I've not grown up yet, but I'm trying. Uh, But I'm growing up in church. This is all I know and I'm so thankful for that. And I think, church, the thing that we should do is to make sure that we continue serving the Lord and we make sure we continue having a heart of joy because the Bible reminds us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. And if we're the ones that have the joy of the Lord and if we're the ones that know what salvation is all about and we're the ones that know what it means to be redeemed and born again and bought from above and to have our sins washed away, we ought to be the happiest people in town. Joyful noise with psalms. All through the word of God, we're told to praise him. We find a situation here and a story here where this is unique because one, you find a tragic situation. This is a time in some men's life that there is nothing that you could say is worse than what these men have. We saw in our text in verse number 11 that it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus shows up to town. How many know when Jesus shows up in town, business always picks up in town? Isn't it good? I'm telling you, if, if you had somehow in the Word of God knew that Jesus was going to be preaching at victory on this week, and if somehow, some way, man, we knew that he in the person, I'm telling you, you need a bigger building, you need a better PA system. I'm telling you, I would walk from Durham, North Carolina to get here to hear the Son of God preach. When Jesus shows up, big things always happen. I mean, he raised three from the dead in the New Testament that he let us know about. And I love what it says about each and every one of them. They were called the only When he raised Lazarus, that was the only brother. When he touched that coffin in Luke, the Bible says that was the only son. And when he raised that daughter, Jairus' daughter, she was the only daughter. Let me tell you, there might be some in here tonight that you feel like you're the only one and you feel like nobody's facing what I'm facing. But I'm telling you many times, our God is the one that'll walk past a lot of people to get to that one that needs his touch. Here's some men that need his touch. Jesus is in town. But how many of you know that in the middle of a good day for some, it's a sad day for others? There's some of you here tonight. I I don't know what it took for you to get here tonight. Some of you probably, I'm not planning on being there. I got too much going on. And pastor, if you only knew what I'm dealing with right now. 
But I'm telling you, you came to the right place. He came at the right time. But many of us need to realize what's a good day for us can be a sad day for others. These ten men, they're lepers, and they hear that Jesus is passing by. Notice their condition. When you found one, especially in Scripture, that had leprosy, all what that means for them is no hope. What that means is death penalty. What that means is there's nothing you can do. That is why for Jesus to heal them, he is saying something right there because only God can heal this. So he is letting them know, I'm deity. He's letting them know, I'm God. Aren't you glad you got a God that's a really big God? Amen. This leprosy, if you will, it is like sin. It goes deeper than just the surface. Just like sin, it goes into our heart. And the Bible says in Isaiah 59, 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. There are many that have allowed sin, the Bible says, to reign in our mortal bodies. And can I tell you, if one thing, if we get nothing else out of a, a, a fall revival, let me say this, unchecked sin will hinder your worship. Oh, I love the singing here, and, and, and I love what's going on, but can I tell you, I don't want to preach without God. I don't want to sing without God. I don't want to do anything without my God, because when that sin is left in there, it's only going to go deeper and deeper and deeper, and before you know it, it's going to affect your children, it's going to affect your marriage, it's going to affect your church, and church, we need the favor of God on our lives. Not only their condition, but hear their cry. They did the right thing when they knew they needed help. The Bible says in verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Can I help you out? Make sure you call on the right person when you need help. I'm not a mechanic, y'all. If your car breaks down, I'll pray for you. I got some oil, I'll stop by and anoint that thing, but that's about all I can do. You shouldn't have bought a Chevy. I don't know what to tell you. Amen. I drive an F-150. Amen. But I don't know how to fix either. Next time I'll drive a Chevy. I don't care. I'm a great compromiser. Amen. <laughs> Never mind. Don't go there. Here we go. Let me tell you what they did. They did the right thing. When they found out, sir, as the priest would check, they're still under Old Testament. You have leprosy. You're out. What do you mean I'm out? You're not going to work. This is your last day at work. You're out. What about my family? You're out. What about the temple? You're out. W wait a minute. What about everything in my life is done? It's done. You're out. And their cry, they heard that this one named Jesus was passing by. I don't know what they knew about him. I don't know if they were believers. I don't know if they were saved or lost. I don't know what they knew about Jesus. Maybe a man walked by and saw him from a distance and said, Hey, fellas, hey, my name's Bartimaeus. Maybe you heard about me. I, I was blind. There's a man coming to town. His name is Jesus. And let me tell you what I did. When I heard he was coming by, I cried out. And the people tried to get me to be quiet, but the more they tried, the louder I got. And the louder I got, he came by my way. Now, I don't know if he does leprosy. I checked his website, and I can't find it on there. But let me tell you, when he comes by, cry out. When he comes by, get his attention. I, I don't know what they knew about him. I don't know if maybe... There was that woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years, and she tried everything, spent everything. And the Bible says doctors are trying everything on her. Now she's walking, and she's clean, and she's healed. And not only that, she's born again. The only one he ever called a daughter. And I don't know if maybe she said, hey, fellas, let me tell you something. When that man comes by, if you get his attention, that's all you need. Because all I did was touch the hem of him. I didn't even get to him. I just got the hem of him. And the hem of him was enough. Oh, yes. All I got was a hem. And I got him's hem. Hey! I know that's not good English. Y'all don't learn that in college around here. I, I, amen. But you get that hem. She said, I'm just saying, if you get close enough, he'll do something for you. 
He saved me. He's done a whole lot in my world. And their cry was so loud. They're crying out to the one. And here's what they said. Have mercy. Notice a tremendous Savior. It's a horrible situation that they were in, but aren't you thankful that you have a Savior that's not afraid of sin? Aren't you thankful you have a God that... Does, nobody scares him. There, there, there's certain words you don't find in the Bible. And God said, oops, that's not in there. And God said, what do I do now? No, nothing scares him. Nothing bothers him. Nothing makes God get nervous. God's not nervous about the election. God's not nervous about our country. God's not nervous about the world. He's a really big God. He shakes about that much. He's got it all together. And it would do really well if God's people, which are called by his name, will humble themselves and get on their knees and start getting a hold of their God. There, there's something about it when you realize how bad I have it. Whoo, you're a good God. This tremendous Savior, look at verse 14. And when he saw them. Under the Levitical law, they deserved nothing. But when they found Jesus, they found grace. He didn't look and leave. Nah, he looked and said, I've been looking for you. A couple weeks ago, I was on my way home after church on Sunday morning, and I stopped by to pick up some lunch for Jenny and I. I was standing there waiting on the food to, to be finished, and I looked down, there were some tables sitting there, and there's a gentleman sitting there, and there's one of our church tracks on the table. I thought, uh-oh, okay. So I, I didn't know the gentleman sitting there, and I said, hello, sir, how are you? He said, I'm all right. I said, oh, good. I said, uh, what is that? Is that yours? He picked up, the, he said, that's not mine. And I said, well, what is it? I said, I have my glasses on, I can't see that far. He said, uh, well, let's read it here. And he said, uh, it's a good way to start eating. No, 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 okay. Oh, he said, it's from a church. He opened up. It's from a church, Liberty Baptist Church. I said, oh, wonderful. What's it say? Read it. We ain't got nowhere to go. We're both waiting on food. He said, uh, okay. He opened up, started reading it. Who has sinned? I said, whoa, that's kind of pointed. He goes, yeah. I said, well, who, who sinned? What sin? He goes, I guess that's bad stuff, isn't it? I said, sounds like it to me. I said, keep reading. He read all the verses. I said, what else does it say? He went through about the penalty of hell, and he went through about what Jesus did. I mean, he's reading verse after verse. He's leading himself to Christ, and I'm just kind of watching him. <laughs> he gets down to the end, and he said, uh, call upon the name of the Lord. And I said, what do you think about that? He looked at me, Brother C.T., and he said, I think I need to do that. And I said, I think you do too. <laughs> I said, can I sit down here with you? And he said, have a seat. He said, who are you? And I said, I kind of am with that outfit. <laughs> we sat there together. He prayed. He accepted the Lord into his heart. We got done, and I looked at him. I said, now, and man, the Holy Ghost just like hit me upside the head. And I said, sir... There's no greater news you'll ever hear. And we went through eternal security and invited him to church and told him all the next steps, what he ought to do. And I said, but can I tell you something? I need to apologize to you. I said, because it, I, I didn't put that track there. I said, but one of our people did. And I said, I'm just going to be honest with you. If that track wasn't there, I would have walked right by you. And I said, I would have passed you by. But I'm so thankful whoever put that track right there and he looked at me, and he took my hand, and he goes, don't, and I'm, I mean, I, I'm bawling. I'm sitting there just, I'm so, sorry, man. I, God, I ought to pass by you. I mean, I'm under conviction. Dear Lord. And he looked at me, Brother C.T., and he grabbed my hand. He goes, hey, Pastor, it's okay. And I said, good. <laughs> but here's what he said. He said, just don't pass by anybody else. We have a Savior that when he walked by, there were 10 men saying, Jesus, have mercy. 
We have a God that he's never too busy. He loves individuals. He loves talking with people. He loves uh, having the hairs on your head have a number. He loves when you cry. He puts your tears in a bottle. He loves it when individuals come to him. He loves it when a little lad brings a lunch. He loves it when Shamgar says, I'm just a farmer and all I have is an ox go, but if you want it, I'll help work for you. He loves individual people. And our God walked by and said, go show yourself to the priest. I, I wonder the attention that he gave them because when he saw them, how, how are we doing with this world? I'm driving up down these streets and seeing the lasting effects of that horrible storm and man, just devastation. And, but I wonder, are we giving attention like we ought to give? But his action, look what he said. Go show yourself unto the priest. Now, wait a minute. They're, they're not cleansed yet. Have mercy. Jesus looks and says, uh, go show yourself to the priest. Can you, can you imagine him saying, uh, I don't think he heard us. Jesus, we need you to have mercy. How many know that God's got a way of doing things? It may not be my way of doing things. It may not be how I want him to do things, but let me tell you this, when God does what God does, you're going to be glad he did what he did. It doesn't make sense all the time. His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. I'm glad I don't have a God I can figure out. If there is a man upstairs, you better get out of upstairs. I'm glad I got a big God that is so big he created everything and puts it in the span of his hand. He's so big that he makes it all. He blows with the wind and calls the storm. What a God we serve. Amen. And he says... Go show yourself. Stay and cry and you're not healed. Trust and obey and watch what happens. His ability is unbelievable. I'm glad we have a God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So to those here tonight that may be lost, I want to say he can save. To the teenager, I want to say he can be trusted. To the single mom, I want to say he can provide. To the single dad, I want to say he'll never leave you. To the young couple, I want to know he'll protect you. To the family in 2024, I want you to know he can make a way when there is no way. To the church victory tonight, it's not time to settle down. It's not time to shut it down. It's time to rev it up, man, and get after souls of men and women and boys and girls and reach everyone we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to say tonight we have a thankful Samaritan. I'm glad that there was one when he saw, the Bible says when he saw that he was healed. Turn back. Look what the Bible says in verse 16. And fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. It's amazing what God puts in the Word of God. He reminds us of this man. He was a Samaritan, meaning the Jews, they couldn't stand those people. If a Jewish individual in those days are walking down this way and a Samaritan was coming this way, the Jew would not go to the other side. He would expect the Samaritan to go to the other side. They wouldn't even want their dust on them. And let me tell you something. What's hurt the church of God tremendously is racism. And I'm glad I'm in church where it don't exist because it's wrong and it's wicked. Amen. White dirt ain't no prettier than black dirt, ain't no better than brown dirt. Dirt is dirt is dirt. And when we die in about five years, we're going back to dirt. Everybody good? Because God made every one of us. Amen. I'm glad for that, friend. His perception. I love what the Bible says, verse 15. And one of them, when he saw. Because what did Jesus say? Go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went. Oh, that's so important. As they went, that faith. If you've ever studied or seen pictures of leprosy, we had a missionary when I was in Bible college come and speak. He was a missionary to Thailand and he led many lepers to Christ and started churches there. And he would show pictures of these men and these women. Their fingers had fallen off. Their noses had fallen off. Their ears had fallen off. And many of them, arms are gone up to the elbows and, and, and to the knees. And, and he showed one of these pastors that 
It took everything he had just to turn the pages of the Bible as he would preach. He had led these people to Christ. He had baptized them. He had helped them to start churches, and he would get churches started all over those colonies. Amazing. You can imagine these men that are so torn up. But as they went, what's the Bible say? They were healed. And I don't know how it went. I'm, the chosen didn't give us this one, so I got to figure it out myself. I don't know what happens. As they went, you can see one of them saying, Hey, your nose, you got a nose. What? Well, you look weird with it. I've never seen you with a nose. I know, right? Hey, your hair, your hair's back. Huh? That's, that's my church hair. And uh, your hair's back. I mean, your ears, your fingers, as they went, they were healed. And I wonder if they turn around in doubt, they went back to what they were. No, 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 no. Turn, turn back, turn back. Let's keep going. I, I love the perception. And can I encourage the young people here tonight especially, I just want to say to the singles and the young people, hey, just keep going with God. You won't regret it. You'll never have to turn around and say, you did me wrong. You didn't do me right. No, 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 no. And you just do what God tells you to do. You read it in that book right there and you just follow God as you go. I'm telling you, I don't know how to build buildings. I don't know how to fix cars. All I know is you read that book right there and you do what God says. God will bless you every day of your life. Amen. There may be bad times. There may be times you disagree with. There's times in our life of our family as we buried a daughter, I disagree with that. As we go through trials, I disagree with those. But I've got a God that's so big that says, just trust and obey. And as they went, they were healed. His perception, he says in verse number 19, he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole because his praise I, I i want to close with this if i can verse 15 the bible says and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice glorified god fell down on his face at his feet can i say this tonight and and, and I, I don't know of a, a better place to say this point i'll be honest with you i preach at a lot of places where they, i i think they've already died Everybody okay? Like, I could hear you all before we even got it. I mean, it was like, you can tell that when it's church time, because everybody starts singing. I think he's just got like y'all programmed or something. At 7 o'clock, everybody starts singing. That's awesome. I go to some churches, it's like, <laughs> like, whoa. My bad. I told this story at Arise, but we were had uh, our... Uh, my dad pastored in Texas for many years, and he had sent me and a young man to go pick up a family in Florida. So we were in Texas. We were supposed to go to Florida, Haines City, if you've ever been down that way. So we drove all the way from Texas on a Saturday. We made it past Pensacola and a little bit further. And then I got to looking at the, this was before GPS, you know, back in the old day. And uh, there was the King James of GPS called the Rand McNally. And so, <laughs> hey, y'all know what I'm talking about? You can see them in museums. You can go by and see one. But um, it's before Siri, hey, man. Dear Lord, no, I'm not talking to you. And so uh, <laughs> open up that, that Ram McNally, and I thought, man, we're never going to make it to Haines City. So the college young uh, man that was with me, I said, listen, we'll stop somewhere, and we'll head on. You know, we'll go to church in the morning, then we'll finish the, the drive and go pick up that family that's moving our way. We went, found, I'm riding around town Sunday morning. I just found something that said Baptist. I could have sued him for false advertisement, amen. <laughs> so we went in there that morning and buildings, a shotgun building like that and had a horseshoe balcony went around like that. We went to the college Sunday school class and ended up teaching it and it was, it was a good time. And uh, he said, does anybody have anything you want to say? And so I do. And uh, we came out and we sat with him on the left-hand side right up there. So we're sitting over there and I'm telling you, the choir came in I thought, man, I think you ought to have fun in church. I think you ought to have fun everywhere you go. Amen. This may be your last day. You might as well go out laughing. 
So we're sitting up there on the left-hand side, and the choir's gotten in, and they, they sang their anthems, and, and then they got done, and, and so the pastor gets up, and I mean, oh, mm, this ain't going to work for me. So the preacher, he's, you know, he's got the rotation down. He's got it going on, man. He, he learned it well. They put the quarter in, and he started moving, you know. <laughs> so we're sitting up there, and I looked at that young man next to me, and I said, hey, you want to have some fun? And he said, no. I said, come on, we ain't coming back. <laughs> Little did I know our senior trip, we took them back anyway. Yeah, but uh, I said, we ain't coming back. So I'm sitting up there and the preacher's preaching. I'm waiting for anything. I don't care if he says, like, Jesus. That, that's enough for me. Woo! <laughs> I literally said, hey, man. Yes. He froze and he's looking. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's like a dog on point, man. He's hunting. And he heard somebody likes what I said. And he's looking and he's got this smile like, I, yes, they like it. But he can't show too much emotion because that's a deacon's meeting. And so he's like, yeah. One guy spotted me. Heavy set man in the choir. Had his Bible just like that. He had his glasses down there. He's ready for his, he looked up like that. And I looked at him and waved at him like that. What's he going to do? The college students from that class are sitting next to us on the other side. And that girl, there's a girl sitting next to me. She about jumped out of her seat. She said, what in the world did you just say? I said, amen. She goes, what's amen? And I thought, that's what you need, amen. And uh, it's for another time. And come back tomorrow night. Uh, but um, I, said, I said, you just say it when the preacher's preaching. She said, can I say it? Sure. Well, when do you say it? I said, I'll count to three and then we'll say it. I ain't got time to teach you. He's running out of material, man. And we done woke up two men in the choir. So I said, you ready? She said, I'm ready. I said, here we go. One, two, three. Amen. And she said, amen. And then she's like, I did it. <laughs> that man in the choir went like that. And I'm waving at him like that. By the time we finish that service, there's 13 of us. What are we doing? He's saying amen. What's it? I don't know. He counts to three. And by the time we're done. All the, look, look in, I'm looking, you ready? One, two, three, hey man! And they go, hey man! And that preacher was like, yeah! And that old man, like that, and we'd all wave at him like that. Hey, let me tell you something. Our God is too good, our God is too great for us to sit around and not realize how wonderful he is. I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I'm glad my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm glad I have a Savior that walked by one day and saw me me and said, go show yourself. You got a big God. Nothing scares him. And that one man came back. And here's what I want to tell us tonight as we close. Whoever's going to play the invitation, y'all come on. I've always wanted to say that here. <laughs> I've waited all year to say that. Help me, Jerry, Jesse, somebody. They're union workers. They won't come without them. <laughs> as loud as you cry, I hope you can play something. <laughs> as loud as you cry for help, we ought to cry just as loud with a thank you. <laughs>